Hey guys, it's Big Mike of BigMikeTrading.com. So continuing the uh, the Q and A questions. Uh, here is a question from a member. I'll read it along with my answer, and then I'll go into some more detail other than uh, what you see here on the screen. All right, it says, "Hi Mike, thanks for the opportunity. I love your site, and I'm slowly getting involved in it. I've been working at trading for 10 years now." and I just can't break a bad habit that keeps hurting me and decimating my accounts. I know I'm supposed to cut my losses short and let my winners run. Uh, you know, everybody says that. Uh, but I keep on moving my stops and backing them up, taking them off, until I end up having to take a much bigger loss than my original stop loss would have been. It's a very common problem. Uh, I've learned very quickly that once I'm in profit, I bring my stop loss up so at the worst, I have a break-even trade. That's another very common uh, move. Uh, my problem is always with those, always with the ones that, uh, that don't get going. How do I change the situation so that I honor the stop loss and just get on to the next trade? Have you found something that works for you? Thanks for your help. Um, okay, let me, let me read my answer real quickly. Uh, this is a very common problem, and here are some of the observations and comments that I have. Uh, always know what you're going to do before you enter the trade. For example, you should know exactly where your stop will be. You should know where your initial target will be. Uh, you should have a very good idea of what the situation would warrant uh, you to exit the trade that you're in or to adjust your target. So. What I mean is that you should, uh, you're should you not trying to predict what the market is going to do because no one knows what the market is going to do. What you can do is anticipate or you can prepare, okay? And so you can kind of visualize. I, I like to uh, run my charts with a pretty wide uh, right margin so that there's some room between the last bar on the chart and the price axis. And I find that it helps me to visualize what the price action might look like in the next, you know, X number of bars that I typically hold a trade for, and uh, or I actually draw you know some real trend lines in and, and arrows or whatever to to help me visualize what's likely to happen. So I think that it's very important that you know ahead of time before you ever enter the position what your stop is going to be uh, and what your your initial target is going to be. And if you're if you're trading multiple contracts or you're scaling out, then you might want to. Uh, uh, have an idea of where you know each individual target is. Um, I also briefly say that uh, stop is a function of price action. It's a function of support and resistance. It's a function of volatility within the market. It is not a function of how much money you can stand to lose. Okay, and I think I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll go ahead and read number two here. Too many traders use a stop to set a pain threshold. Okay, when I say too many. What I really mean is just about everybody, or at least the beginners, or at least the ones losing money. <laughs> okay, uh, they're only comfortable losing five ticks, so they set a five tick stop. Don't do that. Um, the stop should be set based on where, if a, if the price trades to that level, you can clearly say, or you can admit, um, or you can accept, or whatever words you want to use, that your initial trade idea was wrong. And by the way, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with being wrong, okay? Uh, it's, it, it's perfectly normal to have losses in trading. In fact, I'm a firm believer that uh, consistent profitability or long-term profitability of a trader is more about how the trader deals with their losses than it is about how much they win, Okay, so just accept, you know what, that was a losing trade, and let's move on. You made the wrong decision about where the market's going to go. Now let's let's move on. Next trade. Um, it's perfectly normal. In fact, the key to profitable trading is all in the stops or the losses, uh, not in the winning trades. How well a trader manages his losses determines his long-term profitability. Number three, never, ever move your stop back, or to make it clearer in your head, never make your stop bigger once you get into a trade, okay? Uh, if, you, if you're doing this often, if, if this is a common problem for you, and hey, I've been there. I can remember way back when I used to do this. 
I think everybody does this. Um, but eventually, you either blow up your account or multiple accounts, or you'll learn to not do it anymore, okay? I haven't done it in years. So one of the things that I recommend you do, if this is a common problem for you, is to get a post-it note and stick it on your monitor uh, somewhat close to the DOM, okay? And um, basically, you know, the, the note can say something like, do not move your stop under any circumstances, bold, underline, exclamation mark. Um, stick it on your monitor and then tell yourself, if you move your stop even once, even a tick, uh, you know, five ticks, whatever. I don't. It depends on how big your account is. But if you move it, then you have you have failed. You have broken the cardinal rule that you told yourself you were not going to do. Okay. And if you can't even trust yourself to follow the own rules that you've put in place, okay, then you have no business trading. So the consequence of you doing that is that you're going to hit the close button. You're going to get out of that trade immediately. You're not going to wait for it to come back in your favor. You're not going to wait for the next bar. You're not going to see, oh, maybe it'll bounce. You're going to get out of the trade and you're going to get out of it right now. You're going to close the charting application. If necessary, you're going to turn your computer off. You're going to walk away. You're going to go into the living room. You're going to go outside. You're going to walk your dog. I don't care. But there has to be some major consequences of you... Uh, ignoring one of the biggest rules in trading. Okay, uh, I highly encourage that you start charting or start a trading journal on BMT. Uh, you don't need to share any secret sauce uh, if, you, if you feel like you have some kind of a secret method. Um, just talk about your trades in as much detail as you can. And the, the journal, by the way, is not meant to be a spreadsheet of, you know, uh, entered at 32 half, uh, exited 33 half, uh, no, that, that's not what a journal is about. A journal, in my opinion, is more about why you entered at X, why you entered at Y. Whether Y is a target or why is, you know, I, I felt like this trade's going against me or I couldn't stand being in this trade anymore or it was too slow or uh, it was starting to chop or I felt like, you know, I felt like if I didn't close it now, then it may, it may come back and I, I would lose some profits. Those are the things that you journal, okay? And the, the posting of the journal is going to hold you accountable. So if you screw up, then guess what? You need to post about it because that is what's going to really help you not continue to screw up in the future. Uh, and let me tell you what's going to happen. If you are honest with yourself uh, and you admit into your public journal that today you moved your stop and you are really mad at yourself for doing that and you really don't want to do that again, then, then you post it and now it's out there, okay? And your friends or your colleagues or the other, other members of the forum are reading it, right? And then now tomorrow rolls along and you're back into a trade and you, you start to have that same uh, sensation or feeling come over you where you really feel like you need to move that stop. Um, because it's a psychological issue that you're trying to overcome. The first thing that's going to pop into your mind is that, oh, I don't want my friends to slap me around or laugh at me or tell me how big of a mistake that is. So you really need that accountability, and I think a journal can help you. Uh, number five, I don't believe in moving a stop to break even just because. You know, a lot of people do this. They call it protecting their profit or or whatever. Um, I'm not one to ever try to teach anybody a trading methodology. I think that it's extremely important that everybody develop their own methodology. What I try to help on are everything else or is everything else. Okay. But I don't know of too many trading methodologies, not the ones that I've seen in person or, or know directly of actually working that involve moving a stop to break even for really any reason whatsoever. Um, that is a emotional response. That's a psychological crutch. That's a fear factor, greed factor. Um, you know, greed is not just about making money. Greed is also about being unwilling to lose money. And I think that a stop is a factor of market volatility. It's a factor of the support and resistance levels of recent price action, swing high, swing low, that kind of stuff. I do not believe it is anything other than that. In which case, moving a stop to break even, the market doesn't care. 
The market doesn't have any clue about your break-even point. And guess what? What does that mean? That means the market's not going to respect that level that you just instituted into your trade. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to come back and get and get taken out. You're going to turn what would have been a full winner into a zero, into a break-even. But of course, it's not really break-even because there's there's commission costs, there's opportunity costs, there's time costs. Um so I really don't recommend that you uh, move a stop to break even for those reasons. Um, now, that doesn't mean that there's not situation. I mean, you can't just blindly say my profit target is thirteen hundred, and you know what? I'm not. I'm going to take a full stop, or I'm going to hit my full target no matter what. That that doesn't work either. You know, that's another black and white scenario. And markets are not very black and white. Markets are a lot of gray. So you know you can't you can't be uh, you can't be like that. You have to have a sense of the market that it's not doing what you thought it was going to do. Um, you know you want to uh, anticipate, not predict, right? Or prepare not predict. So if you were prepared for scenario X, Y, Z, or you were anticipating one or another uh, situation to happen and neither of those are happening or uh, or the bad scenario is unfolding, that, that is the time when you should move your stop. But you don't move it just because you know, you're know you afraid that, the, that it's going to turn around and, and take you out. You need to have a reason. Look at it one more, one more way. If you took a screenshot at that very moment that you were trying to move your stop to break even, and you sent that screenshot to you know, 50 of your closest uh, trading buddies on the forum, and you said, hey, I just moved my stop up. What do you think? Question mark. Uh, are, are most of them kind of come back and say, yeah, why did you do that? That doesn't make any sense. I don't see any reason for you to have done that. Um, if that's a pretty good indication. You shouldn't, shouldn't probably be doing it. All right, number six, the trader that quickly moves the stop to break even or quickly takes just a handful of ticks out of desperation is the trader that is either trading scared money, like rent money or money they can't afford to lose, or the trader that has zero confidence in his system, uh, meaning that his system has not been properly researched or forward tested, and, and or the trader that is trading far too big for his comfort or his account size, okay? Now, uh, I have a webinar series called Where to Start as a Trader, and that link on the screen is for part one, uh, that really will help you uh, define the appropriate market to trade and the appropriate instrument to trade based on your risk tolerances and your account size. Because uh, here's what people tend to do, which is the wrong thing. People tend to say, I have X number of dollars in my account, um, but I'm only willing to lose $50 a trade, uh, $250 a trade, $500 a trade, whatever it is. They have this dollar amount that takes precedence over any other dollar amount, uh, and that is their pain threshold. And so they trade around that pain threshold, which makes no sense in terms of the market. So uh, usually it means that they're trading way too small of a stop. They're trading noise. They're trading chop, um, whatever you want to call it. What they probably need to do is not simply increase their stop in terms of dollars, okay, because I never advocate that anyone should trade bigger than 1% to 2% of their account in terms of risk on any given trade. So what they probably should do, depending on their account size, is to change the instrument or maybe even the market. So if they're trading uh, the Euro dollar futures, you know, the full sized 6E contract, maybe what they need to do is step down to the CME FX micros, the M6E, which is one tenth of the size. And uh, you can still chart the full size 6E, but your DOM is gonna be set up on the M6E so you're executing at one-tenth of the risk. So that will allow you to move the stop where it really needs to be, a function of price action and supporter resistance. And it will not increase the actual dollar of your stop. Um, and if you need to even stop trading futures altogether, you could consider trading spot Forex, uh, which you can go all the way down to uh, uh, 10 cents a pip 
or roughly one one hundredth the size of the full sized uh, index futures or currency futures on the futures market. All right, guys, I hope that's been helpful and please subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting a lot more of these soon.